You're in the great game now. And the great game is terrifying. Yes, yes. Ha 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 ha. I need the, re- I need the realness. All right, thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Game is a Game podcast. I'm here, as always, with my bro, Eric. Go ahead and hit subscribe if you haven't. Uh, Thank you for rocking with us. We're going to go ahead and do a a Brooklyn versus Milwaukee Bucks breakdown. Um, A lot of people are saying that this might be a finals preview, uh, thinking that whoever wins this series, this might be the toughest series that they play. And whoever wins this series is probably going to win the title. Uh, I don't particularly agree with that but um i could see a scenario where these two teams win the title but uh uh, i I do think it's going to be a great series i do think this is going to be the best series in the semis um so the way that we're going to kick it off is uh we're going to have three questions we uh three of the biggest questions we think are going to be in this series for the bucks and the nets we'll see if we have some overlap um i'll go ahead and kick it off first with the bucks my number one question for the Bucks is who does Crew Holiday guard? So um, when they played each other the three times in the regular season, none of the the team in total wasn't together. Uh, Brooklyn never played with Kyrie, KD, and Harden, and uh, the Bucks didn't have their full cast of characters as well. So it's kind of hard to glean anything in the regular season matchups. Uh, when they did play these, they had a back to back stretch. Uh, towards the end of the season and crew guarded uh, uh, Kyrie and he pretty much stuffed in the locker. I I think as far as guarding Kyrie, he's the best p- person in the league that I've ever seen do that. Um, so the interesting uh, conundrum for the Bucks is who do you put crew on? Do you put him on Kyrie or do you put him on Harden? My personal opinion, I think you put him on Harden. Um, I've always thought that Harden is the head of the snake here. I think Kyrie and KD are, are, are ball stoppers. You know, no knock to the game because they're two of the greatest one-on-one players that have ever played the game, but the ball doesn't really pop and move. Um, I think you can load up on those guys, and in particular, Kyrie doesn't take the best shots. So my focus, if it was me, would be putting crew on um, Harden, try to slow him down and get the ball more in Kyrie's hands, get the ball more in KD's hands. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I have the same question. Uh, okay. Who on Kyrie or Harden, and can he be that elite defender that can cause issues? And I, I have the same thing. I would put him on Harden because Harden is the one that's going to get everybody else shots and get the team going. Um, Kyrie's going to play one on one. His game is not the kind of game where he make he gets um, he creates easy shots for others, or he dominates the game by getting other players open threes and. And, and moving the pace of the offense. So obviously to me, the smart decision will be to, to put him on Harden uh, because Harden is the head of the snake in terms of getting other people open looks and and, and, and getting the team rolling. Um, I think that you just put him on Harden and, and, and hope for the best. But my question, you know, I was kind of aligned with yours, but um, you know, the only difference is, you know, is can Crew Holiday be that elite defender that we have known him as um, his whole career. And I think that um, he's finally going to be put on the main stage. This is, um, this is the main stage. Obviously he had a couple of times where the Pelicans uh, made the playoffs and, you know, obviously they had that series where um, they swept Portland and um, he was a defensive animal. Um, But I don't think that the stage was um, as big as it is. No, the limelight is not going to be with this. I mean, I think, this is going to draw a huge number. Yeah. Lights are on. I think that um, everyone in America um, that cares for playoff basketball will tune in for every game of this series. So the lights mm-hmm. are on for Crew Holiday. So can he be that elite defender uh, with the lights on against um, three of the best offensive players in the league? Um, so yeah. that's that's my question. But like I said, I agree with you. I will put him on hard. Yeah. And I, and I think it does. It definitely matters uh, who they put him on to start. Like Bud has been. Uh, notorious for not making changes or being slow to make changes. So I, I do think that what he thinks initially is going to be very key. So if he starts him out for, on Kyrie, I do think that's a very bad sign for Brooklyn. Uh, no, excuse me, a, a very uh, bad sign for the Bucks. So 
You know, he's very notorious on not being movable, not being flexible with his and rotations, that, with his matchups. And that that leads me to my second question. So I will kick off the second question and you can kind of follow up after me is, can Coach Bud make the necessary adjustments that he needs to or will mm. he be uh, two or three steps behind? Um, I don't think in this series he's going to have enough time to be behind. So Coach Bud, again, he's um, he's in the limelight. I think that Coach Bud, if you look back, um, I believe that was the 2015 Hawks that were the number one seed um, uh, when they got bounced by Cleveland. Um, even going back, you know, last year and um, the year before that, um, since he's been there, since he's been there and he's been the coach, um, you know, they've kind of fallen short um, in Milwaukee. But I think that this is an opportunity, a big opportunity uh, for Coach Bud to kind of uh, change his name and change uh, the perception of him as uh, of a co as a coach around the league. So. Uh, my question, my second qu biggest question for the Bucks is, can Coach Bud make the necessary adjustments? Um, I yeah, you know, that, that's a good one. I, I didn't have that one as a question, uh, but that's a, it, is, it is an important question because, uh, you know, he obviously has a seniority of coaching over Nash. You know, this is Nash's first go around. Uh, he does have Mac D'Antoni on the bench with him. But, yeah, who wins that coaching matchup? Once again, Bud has just been slow to make dis uh, changes. Uh, so... We'll definitely see. Uh, my second question was, who guards KD? Um, so Giannis, he took on the challenge of guarding Jimmy Butler. Um, and I think that was a really big thing that surprised a lot of people uh, because of his relu reluctance to do so last year um, and Coach Bud's reluctance to put him on uh, him last year. Um, so do they make, take the same approach or like, hey, we're going to put our two big guns on their two big guns or are they going to say, hey, we're going to ease him into this. Let's have Chris Middleton guard him and uh, then P.J. Tucker guard him for stretches and then maybe Giannis on him a spot duty. Do we do we feel like, hey, especially in a series like this where you have two ball handlers that can break people down with James Harden and Kyrie Irving, that it makes more sense to have Giannis as a help defender? Or they say, hey, we're going to match their guys with our guys strength on strength from the beginning. So that, to me, was an interesting thing and how they're going to play it all. If you're asking me, I think that uh, it, it should be by committee, but I would start Giannis out on KD um, just to set the tone in every series. I do think that P.J. Tucker is one of the better defenders in the league on KD. So when he comes in, I think he should take that assignment. But to start out the game, I definitely would have KD on um Giannis on KD well sure I'll let you I'll let you uh, uh double back and kick off your last question for the Bucks. Uh, so my last question with the Bucks is uh Brooke Lopez Brooke Lopez or Pat Connaughton uh Brooke Lopez he I think sneakily has played really well his last two playoff series I think he played last year versus the uh, the Heat I think he played really well in that series despite them losing and I think this year he played really well versus the Heat again um, gave Bam a lot of uh, trouble finishing over him at the rim. Uh, so is uh, can he play well enough to stay on the floor? You know, you have those two pick and roll mavens. I, I think it's probably going to be hard for him to stay on the floor. So it's probably going to be Pat Connaughton. Pat Connaughton closed a couple of the games, and he's actually shot the ball pretty well uh, in the regular season from three, and that continued the postseason. I, I think he shot about 43 44% versus uh, the Heat. So if it's going to be, who's that fifth guy with Dante being out and how well do they play? I think that's the third. Uh, most my, my, my third question um, is, um, I think, um, I would say my biggest question um, for, at least for me, in my opinion, is Chris Middleton. Can Chris mm. Middleton put enough pressure on the Nets to start caught, to, to cause them to scramble defensively? I think that if Chris Middleton can come out and play um, like an all-star, be an elite player offensively, I think that the Nets start to scramble because the Nets don't have a lot of uh, good all-ball defenders. Um, outside of KD, you have Bruce Brown, and, you know, the, the, the uh, those two. But outside of them, I, I think that um, if you look at the matchups, if you put James Harden, Joe Harris, Kyrie Irving, um, anyone of that nature on, on Chris Middleton, you would have to think, that Chris Middleton is the the favorite in that matchup, so I think that if he can come out and be um, dominant offensively and find his game and be an All Star, 
now I think that it causes a lot of trouble for the Nets defensively because do you take KD and now do you put him on Middleton? And now if you do that, what does what do they do for Giannis? How do they mm-hmm. guard Giannis? How do they how do they deal with you know Giannis and the other players on their team? So I think that when breaking down this series, I really think that it's crazy. I know a lot of people think it's crazy to say, but to me, a lot of the series lies on Chris Middleton. What kind of player can he be in the series? Can he be a player in the series that the Nets after a game say, you know what, we have to game plan for him because he is killing us offensively. He's killing us um, um, to the point where we have to do something different. Um, we can't, mm-hmm. can't just leave James Harden on him. We can't leave Joe Harris on him. He's killing them. Um, mm-hmm. if he does that. I think that the Nets, um, you put them in a position where they're scrambling. Now. They have to do something different. Um, mm-hmm. and I think that obviously if, if Middleton is killing like that, and uh, he is elite offensively, it, it opens up the floor more for Giannis um, because now they have to pay more focus and attention to Middleton. And if Giannis is going and um, Pat Connaughton, Crew Holiday, and P.J. Tucker, and Brooke Lopez, if they're making shots, um, now it's a lot for the Nets to deal with. Um, so I think that this series will be a true test for uh, the Nets because um, they have people that they have to deal with out on the perimeter. If you look at the Boston series, you only really had Tatum to deal with. Yes, you had Kemba Walker, but Kemba Walker was a shell of himself. He wasn't healthy. He, he, he's been up and down this whole season. And um, for the most part, he was down in the net series. He's been down in this series. So mm-hmm. um, my biggest question is Chris Middleton. Can he be that kind of player? And um, I've seen flashes um, of it. And he was, um, he was an all-star in that Miami series. He was, he was good the whole series. So can he continue that on? And I think that if he can continue that on, I wouldn't necessarily say that make, that makes the Bucks the favorite, but it makes the Nets scramble defensively. And I think if they're scrambling and you're able to put pressure on them, um, you have a uh, you have a good chance to win the series. Yeah, you know, and and you mentioned it. There's, there's some really good points there. You mentioned uh, it. Uh, my first question for uh, the Nets would be, who guards Giannis? Uh, so, you know, a lot has been made about the Dante DiVincenzo injury, but Jeff Green also got hurt uh, for Brooklyn. And I think that he would have been one of their major answers at guarding Giannis and just being on the floor, just in general. Uh, you talked about who's going to guard Milton. He, I think he would have been able to help them out there. Um, so now who guards Giannis? Uh, their last regular season matchup that they played, they played uh, Blake Griffin at center and they started him on him. And, you know, actually Blake Griffin didn't do that bad of a job guarding him. Uh, but uh, who guards Giannis? Is that something that KD does full time? Um, I do think that this is going to be a, a, a team that uh, Giannis is probably going to try to push the pace on. Um, you know, the Heat were really good and disciplined about building the wall. I don't expect the, the Nets to be that disciplined. So if it is KD, I do that's gonna think that's going to drain a lot of his energy, uh, just dealing with someone who plays at Giannis, the force of him constantly driving down rim, constantly putting his forearm and your chest, uh, you know, trying to dunk on you. So uh, it, do they go with KD or do they go with Blake Griffin? And is that too much to ask of Blake Griffin at this point in his career? Uh, my first question for the Nets would be, do they have enough time? Do I mean, they've been in and out of the lineup. Uh, you know, Kyrie <laughs> uh, uh, on the Zach Lowe podcast, remember they said he was on sabbatical a couple of times. <laughs> yeah. Um, James Man, Harden. Had, I mean, that's what it was. It was yeah, a sabbatical. James Harden had injuries. Um, Kevin Durant had injuries. So, do they have enough time? I think that in a series, um, you know, not to rag on my Celtics too much, but the Celtics, you know, they had their own mess going on. So, that was a series where, you know, they could take their time and it didn't really matter because um, no matter what happened, the Nets were going to win that series, uh, barring a major injury to Harden or Kevin Durant. Um, So uh, my question to them is, do they have enough time? Because I don't think that this is a series where you can come out and say, oh, we lost, you know, the first game or we lost the the third game and it's, 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 it's two, two or three, two, and we're still trying to figure things out. No, you can't do that against the Bucks. This is a team that's been together for a long time. Um, They are a team that um, is hungry, a team that is uh, well coached. And they have um, they have horses. They have mm-hmm. uh, they have they have Giannis. They have Middleton. They have Crew Holiday. So I don't think this is a series 
where you can you can find your rhythm and find your sea legs like you're doing against Boston because that's literally that's really what you're doing against Boston. Yeah, you're finding, uh-huh. your, sea, you're finding your sea legs against Boston. Yeah, we you know when we mentioned it on the Eastern Conference uh, playoff breakdown that we did is that you know they had their starters in in blowouts for the last two minutes of the game and I think that it was to the concern that you just brought up that do they have enough time do they have enough reps you know one of my questions that I had down here and I'll go ahead and just get to it is. Brooklyn in the last two minutes, you know, um, I think that this is obviously not going to be a team that they're going to be able to blow out. I do think that these a, lot, a couple of these games will be decided in the last couple of minutes of the game. What does their two minute offense look like? And, you know, the same question we pose to the Bucks. you know, is it I'm guessing with the Bucks is probably going to be a holiday uh, Giannis pick and roll with how Giannis diving catching the ball um, in, in with momentum and then being able to finish in the rim or if they play off crew, crew shooting that mid-range jumper. But what does the Bucks, uh, the, the Nets offense look like? You know, Kyrie has said, hey, I, I'm going to give up the reins to James Harden to be the point guard, but does he feel that he should be closing? You know, Kyrie has the, the biggest clutch basket in NBA history with that game sh- seven shot uh, versus uh, – uh, the Warriors to come back down 3-1. You know, he could say, hey, I have this the, these shots on my resume. KD, you don't have this type of shot on your resume. You won those two titles, but you guys were so dominant, none of the games were closed. And James Harden, you've never, you know, you've never played on this stage and played well. You know, he played in Oklahoma City, but he struggled in the finals. So if Kyrie says that, or do these guys push back at him? And once yeah. again, we've said, we don't think that Kyrie should have the ball in his hands. Um, you know, does KD say, Hey, I deserve the shot, you know, and, and the thing about KD and, and, and James Harden, Kyrie, I've never been a big fan of the Nets winning the title. You know, I know Zach Lowe and Bill Simmons and a lot of guys have picked them and said it's just overwhelming. But I, I think that the, one of the problems that I have with this team is that just don't, they don't complement each other. You know, mm-hmm. I just talked about Definitely. a holiday Giannis pick and roll. It makes sense. You know, there's a compliment in the game for them. You know, any crunch time offense that we're talking about with the Nets is probably going to be one-on-one basketball because you can't really incorporate the other guys. You know, KD is a big guy as far as height, but he's not really a screener. Um, You know, I remember thinking when he signed with the Warriors that the Steph Curry, KD pick and roll is going to be an unstoppable offensive play, and it never materialized because the thing about a pick and roll is it starts with the pick, and KD doesn't take good picks. So. yeah, I, they're the both teams, um, but in particularly the Nets. Two minute offense. Who runs it? What does it look like? Yeah, my second question for the Nets was, how does KD do in that Giannis uh, matchup? So, and the reason why um, I posed that question because um, when I sat back and I thought about it, and um, I'm gonna kind of try to make this point and try to stay with me uh, for the people that are watching as well as Ant, stay with me. Uh, if you look at Kevin Durant over the last couple of years, and if you look at the teams that he's been on, even when, you know, they played um, LeBron in the finals and they played uh, uh, Houston in the Western Conference finals, and he was on these Warrior teams. Um, KD is, I, I don't want to take nothing away from KD as a defender because I think he's an elite defender. However, you've always played on teams that have had multiple um above average defenders if you want to talk elite about defenders them. elite wing defenders. defenders um clay thompson andre Iguodala, sean Livingston, mm-hmm. um the andre list roberson goes, you know andre roberson tabo list, you know tabo cephalosha the list goes on so it's not like um <clears throat> and you know from what i can remember um watching those series closely and all those series he played with kd never really assumed the, the primary role defensively for and mm-hmm. for, for the whole series mm-hmm. not to say that he didn't have times where you know he guarded he didn't guard lebron james because that would be a lie he did there wasn't times that he he guarded uh james harden yeah there were times that he did that but i would think in this series this series because of the nets uh lack of uh good on ball defenders kd has to assume that role for the most part of the series, I would I would mm-hmm. just with uh, Jeff Green being hurt, uh, uh, their only other I think um, above average on ball defender being Bruce Brown. I would think that he has to assume that role uh, more than he has ever done in his career. I, I, I that's just my opinion. I don't think that he has ever been put in a position where it's like KD, 
okay, you got to guard him all series because we don't have anything else. Because again, if we're talking about James Harden, uh, uh, any of these other players, Joe Harris being the primary defender on Giannis, you would have to say, okay, this that, <laughs> that matchup favors Giannis. So mm-hmm. I think their only realistic opportunity, obviously, it's not just one-on-one basketball. There's going to be um, elements of team defense, and they're going to have uh, obviously they're going to have times where they try to uh, take the ball out of Giannis's hands or deny him the ball. So it's going to be a group effort. But for the most part, Kevin Durant has to assume that 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 responsibility by himself. He has the he has to take a chunk of that responsibility. So I just want to see him coming off that Achilles injury, him being in and out of the lineup for the season. How does he handle that? Um, how does he handle Gian- Giannis' bully basketball? Um, how does he handle in the first quarter if he gets two quick fouls? That's, so, mm-hmm. that, that, that's things that I think people need to seriously think about. Those are th- those are things that, that can happen. Um, mm-hmm. Is he going to be worn down by game four because of the way Giannis plays? I mean, that's a that's a tough assignment. So mm-hmm. um, that, that's my second question for the Nets. How does he do with that matchup? Because I think with Jeff Green being hurt and them not really having um, premier on-ball defenders like his past teams, like again with Andre Iguodala, Clay Thompson, Draymond Green, Sean Livingston, Andre Roberson, uh, Tabo Cephalosha, um, even uh, you know Russell, Russell Westbrook and other players that they have, um, can he now that he's not on a team that is stacked with above average, average defenders? can he um, assume that responsibility for a whole series? Um, yeah, no, that's that's a good point. And, you know, we talked about the perimeter defenders. You also have to talk about the help defenders. You know, Draymond Green and Ibaka, they might have been the two best help defenders of our generation, um, of that previous generation, excuse me. Um, so uh, you definitely have to add them into them. The last question is actually that I have was a piggyback off of yours actually is uh, DJ and Claxton. Um, is it is is what we're talking about just completely moot? And it's it, it's unrealistic to say that uh, you know uh, KD and Blake Griffin can anchor this team. Are they going to have to play big? Something that they have been reluctant to do. Um, and if they play big, do they become an easier team to guard? You know, that's an easy place that you help off of. I think um, to interject really quick, and uh, I'll let you get back to your point. But I think that the Bucks uh, want them to play DJ. If that's yeah. just me, from how I see it, I think the Bucks would welcome them playing DeAndre Jordan. Yeah, because he stopped playing in the year, and I was like, is DJ hurt? It was like, no, he's just getting DMP CDs. <laughs> and I was just like, okay. Um, you know, Blake has played well. Uh, he obviously did the Fugazi. He still has juice in his body. He As soon as he gets there, he's dunking. Um, but that's a tall tax to yeah. ask him to guard Giannis. Shout out to, shout out to Blake Griffin because he played possum in Detroit. That's yeah, he played possum. Awesome. He got out of there. And he's in Brooklyn enjoying. So shout out to him for that. But I think that's a tall task to ask for him coming off his uh, history of injuries. But I, as I mentioned, he he guarded Giannis pretty well um, on those two regular season on that back-to-back stretch that they had um, where they played uh, the Bucks. So um, can he do it for a series? Uh, Giannis hasn't – he didn't play particularly well offensively versus the Heat. Um, and I think he's going to have to play a lot better, obviously, to win this series. But I, I do think that the way that they dominated the Heat, he probably didn't need to challenge it. I think that this is the first time where he's going to go into the series um, in this run of him being the back-to-back MVP and becoming one of the top three or four names that you mentioned as best player in the league. He's going to go into the series as an underdog. This is the first time that he's going to come into the series where there's no real pressure on the Bucs. If they lose this series, there's no pressure. So the way that Giannis plays is something that I'm definitely have my eye on. Um, did you get to your last one? No, I haven't got to my last one is, and it's kind of to piggyback off the, you know, the DJ Claxon question that you asked is, do the Nets go small? Because I just personally think that playing DeAndre Jordan um, is a welcoming sight for the Bucs. And, no disrespect to DeAndre Jordan, but I just think that him and Claxton on the floor favors uh, the Bucks. Um, so if the Nets do go small, um, how are they going to handle uh, Giannis uh, on the defensive end? How are they going to game plan and how are they going to uh, stop and, and, and deal with the Bucks' offense? Because I think, again, um, 
I think going down the stretch, you, like you said, the, these games are, I don't think, I just don't foresee the Bucks getting blown out. Um, I think these games are going to be close. And down the stretch, that's a big question. What is going to be the Nets lineup? What, what, what are you going to do? Who are the players you're going to play? So if we had to sit here now and break it down, we have to ask ourselves, okay, we know who the three, the, the, the first three are. Um, you would have to assume that they're, they, they're going to play Joe Harris because he gives them space in the shooting. So who is that fifth player that they're going to play? And I think mm-hmm. that this is where Jeff Green is needed. Um, but uh, you have to ask yourself, okay, now if Jeff Green, you know, dealing with the injury, okay, is it Blake Griffin? Um, how I, I, and, and what does what does Blake Griffin offer them defensively, and what does he offer him offensively? Um, because when we talk about spacing for the Nets, to me, I would let Blake Griffin shoot shoot those threes all day. I would mm-hmm. let him shoot it if I was if I was if I was Coach Bud, I would let him shoot it. Um, now, if you're talking about playing DeAndre Jordan or Claxton. Um, those two give them nothing offensively. So, um, but, you know, they provide size and um, um, rim protection um, on the defensive end. So what, what, what is going to be their, their, their crunch time lineup? And are they going to go small for a lot of stretches of the game? And do, are the Bucks going to be able to take advantage of the Nets going small? Yeah, I, I think definitely. I, I think uh, it's it's a it's an interesting conundrum uh, what the Nets do. Uh, Brown, another player who played big for them, Bruce Brown. Um, I don't know if he can play uh, this series. He's just too small. I just don't see how he guards and how he who he helps. Um, There's just too small of a lineup uh, to put out there. So I think it's going to be interesting what they do um, on that. So at prediction time. I'll go ahead and kick it off. No, I go, I'm, I've been going back and forth, but the more that I talk about it, I just feel like the Bucs are going to win this series. So I'm going to say Bucks in seven, but part of me wants to say Bucks in six. I just think that this is just a bad matchup with the force that Giannis is going to play with. I think that this is just a series where he can eat. Um, it's going to, it's asking a lot of KD and Blake Griffin to, to deal with this young stallion in his prime. I mean, I just think that, you know, after watching playing the Heat for two straight seasons and watching them build a wall against him, I think he's just going to be a kid, a, a pig in slop, just attacking the rim, punishing the rim, and it's just going to be too much to ask KD coming off of an injury, Blake Griffin coming off an injury, uh, James Harden coming off an injury to deal with him. I, I just think that he's going to dominate. So I'm going to say Bucks in seven to be respectful, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's Bucks in six. What do you have? Uh, I'm still going to go with the Nets in six. I just think that they have too much, um, uh, fire offensively. Um, I just think that, um, they have, they have, they have their horses, um, just, uh, um, they have too many horses and the Bucks don't have as many horses as, um, uh, as they do. I just think that offensively, I just don't know if the Bucks can handle and can contain that for seven games. That's just a tough task, um, for them, um, to, to handle. And I think that if the Bucks, if they have a game where they're not making shots, um, it's going to be a tall task for them to win that game. I just think that ultimately uh, between um, uh, Harden and, and, and uh, Kevin Durant, they'll, they'll figure it out and they'll, they'll score enough to, uh, to win the games because ultimately um, the Bucks still have to play well defensively. They have to, they have to play better than well. They have to play great to win four games against them. So mm-hmm. Less barring a major injury, I got the Nets. The Nets in six. I think that the first, the first two games will be split. Um, um, the Nets will win. You know they will both handle business on their home floor, and um, uh, the Nets will ultimately win the next two games. That's just my thinking. But uh, I just I would say the Nets in six. Uh, the the Nets just have too much firepower. Yeah, you know, that, that's a good prediction. One thing that I, I did not, I failed to mention that uh, I do think the Bucks crowd is going to play a role in this. You know, uh, KD and Kyrie are very dismissive about uh, the Knicks fan base and uh, what it means to play in New York. And I just don't think that their crowd is going to be as ravenous. And we've seen, um, it hasn't really translated to wins, but I don't think that the series have been competitive enough uh, talent wise for it to really make a difference. But I do think in a series like this, where you're playing on the margins, I do think the cr- whole crowd can be a factor. And 
I, I mean, we'll, we'll see if the next crowd can get to that level, but I know the Bucks crowd can. So, um, yeah, I'm interested to see this series. This is the second round series that I'm yeah. most and, hyped to see. And and one last point that I would like to make is just, you know, um, can Giannis, you know, ascend and be that be that kind of guy? I mean, uh-huh. I think yeah. this is the series, I think for a lot of them that a lot of the, those Milwaukee Bucks, um, the players, even the coach, I think that the lights are on and this is a chance for you to cleanse yourself of all your sins in the past, you know? Yeah, you know, it is. You, you're right. I mean, he's a, um, yeah, he's a two-time way, MVP. Uh huh. Go away. And, uh, and I think that if he beats the, the, the Nets, everyone will, everyone that is a doubter will say, yeah, he deserves those, both those MVPs. Yeah. He was yeah. the MVP because yeah. he kind of was the MVP this year and he beat the Nets. Yeah. So um, I think that this is an opportunity for all of them. Drew holiday, um, Chris Middleton to show that he is that kind of player for Giannis to ascend his game as a superstar and stamp himself as a top five player in this league because I know listening to different podcasts through the Wind Horse podcast Zach Lowe's podcast sometimes um, you know Giannis is mentioned up there but a lot of people don't have him as a top five player in the league um, you mm-hmm. know, you mentioned top five you talk about Kevin Durant Steph Curry LeBron uh, Harden Kawhi um, sometimes Giannis doesn't make it um, into mm-hmm. that top five so I think this is an opportunity for him, even though I'm picking the Nets, this is an opportunity for him to prove me wrong and prove those wrong, prove other people wrong out there that don't believe that he's a top five player or, or, you know, he's not deserving of that MVP. I think this is a a, a serious opportunity for the Bucks to, uh, you know, wash away some of those sins that they've had in the past and um, build new life for themselves. You know, definitely. That's a very good point. Uh, that's a very good point. Yeah. So this is the series I think I'm, that everybody's uh, tuned into. So uh, that is our breakdown. Those are our predictions. If you have any comments, definitely leave them. Subscribe. I'm going to kick out more content to you guys. Uh, until the next time, everybody stay safe, stay solid. We'll see you soon. So what's up, man? What's up with you otherwise, you know? Uh, the game is a game. Always. <laughs>